So we've already covered topics such as up counters and down counters. Up counters, we've covered uh, both asynchronous and synchronous models. And then down counters, we basically just showed the principle of how you can turn an up counter into a down counter simply by inverting its output. But today I want to go over up down counters, which is a pretty useful circuit that allows you to one, start counting up, and then at any point in that sequence, start counting back down again, which can be helpful in certain situations. But before I do that, I do want to cover another simpler, I would say, counter circuit that will make understanding the concept a little bit easier. It, it may not be technically accurate. I'm sure if you were to implement this sort of circuit using real world mediums such as electronics, it probably wouldn't work as you would expect. But for the sake of demonstration, I want to show it to you anyway. So before we can look at the circuit, I, I first want to uh, cover an algorithm for binary counting that I think might be useful to understand here, um, just to make understanding the circuit easier. And that is an algorithm called selective inversion. Um, it's a pretty simple algorithm. Uh, basically, for any string of bits, you start at the lowest, uh, least significant bit, uh, which is the smallest bit, of course. Um, and then you follow one of two rules. Rule number one is if the bit is equal to a zero, you change it to a one and halt. And rule number two is if the bit is equal to a one, you change it to a zero and look left. For example, if I have the bit sequence zero, 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 I would start at the least significant bit um, and I would take a look at that bit. The bit is equal to zero, so we follow rule one. That changes it to a one and then halts. So that bit remains the same, that bit remains the same, that bit remains the same, and that one changes to a one. If, however, I have a sequence that looks something like this, where we have a zero somewhere in the middle of the number followed by a sequence of ones all the way to the least significant bit, well, then we get to see the, the full power of this algorithm here. So again, we start at the least significant bit. Since it's a one, we change it to a zero and then look left. So that now becomes a zero. And we look at the next bit to the left. It's also a one, so we do the same thing. That's also a one, so we do the same thing. And now we're looking at a zero, so we follow rule one, change it to a one and halt. So we change that to a one, and then we stop the process. And what we've just done right there is we've taken this number and we've incremented it by one. And you can almost think of it like we're sending a clock pulse from the least significant bit all the way to the most significant bit, flipping the bits so long as we encounter ones. And as soon as we encounter a zero, we still flip the bit, but we stop the process right there. The clock, uh, clock signal doesn't proceed any further. And so if I were to turn that into a circuit, well, what we would start with is we would start with a T flip-flop. And I'm going to be drawing the circuit from right to left here because I want the least significant bit to be on the, the rightmost side, just to keep with convention. Um, so we have a T flip-flop over here. That's our least significant bit. And we have just a clock signal that goes in. Every time we receive a clock signal, the T flip-flop toggles. And then that changes from either a 1 to a 0 or 0 to a 1. And we can then have another T flip-flop right here. And that will be the next bit over. But of course, we don't want this to toggle every time we receive a clock pulse, because then we're just going to have two bits that say the same thing. What we want is for this to toggle when this goes from high to low. And so what we can do is we can take the Q output, and we can run it through an AND gate with the clock signal. And so following this here, um, what we have to assume is that the clock signal coming into the circuit is going to turn off by the time Q on the first T flip-flop turns on. And that's important because if the clock signal comes in, uh, this first T flip-flop toggles, and then that signal comes in, you're going to get a clock signal to propagate to the next T flip-flop. So for all intents and purposes, the clock signal turns off by the time this turns on. So. Clock signal turns on, this toggles, this now becomes a one. And again, because the clock signal has turned off by the time this signal gets over here, this AND gate never activates. So we've effectively gone from zero, zero to zero, one. We then send another clock pulse. This toggles again, but during that time, this signal's already on. So that clock pulse proceeds through the AND gate and toggles the next flip-flop. So this one toggles from one to zero. This one toggles from zero to one, and we've counted up again. Then again, if we send the clock pulse again, um, the clock pulse can't get through here because the Q output of the first T flip-flop is zero. So this just toggles and we get one, one. And so what we can then do is we can daisy chain this exact same circuit into more and more T flip-flops, creating an up counter um, that again, implements our selective inversion algorithm where the clock only goes as far as it needs to 
to get rid of any ones and then invert the next zero. And I can even show you that in action here. If we assume that this circuit is already in the state 1011, what we can do is we can send a clock pulse and that clock pulse is going to toggle this bit so it becomes a zero. Um, during that time, because there was a one on the line, the clock pulse proceeds to the next T flip-flop that turns into a zero. Then we get to the next T flip-flop. That one had a zero, so that one's gonna become a one. And because this was a zero by the time the clock got here, this one doesn't toggle, so we increment the value accordingly. This sort of expecting the clock pulse to get to the AND gate by the time the T flip-flop changes, it's pretty unrealistic in um, real mediums such as electronics, which is why I would say this technically isn't accurate. But for all intents and purposes, it demonstrates the principle well enough, so I'm going to stick with it. But with that said here, what we've basically got is something of a synchronous counter. Um, it may not look like it because it may seem like the, the T value or the, the Q value of each T flip-flop has to propagate to each T flip-flop accordingly. Um, but all we're doing is we're just controlling where the clock goes to depending on the value of the previous T flip-flops. The clock still is synchronous across all T flip-flops. It does get to all of them at the same time. For that reason, I would argue that this is a, a synchronous uh, counter, but ultimately it doesn't really matter. I'm just going with this one because it's the easiest to modify into an up-down counter, and also this sort of circuit is the easiest to wrap your head around. So it should make understanding what I'm about to do a little easier. So if we look back to the down counter tutorial, we already know that the down counter sequence is the same thing as the up counter sequence, just inverted. So if I count 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, 0, and 1, 1, 1. That is our up counter sequence. Now, our down counter, we would obviously start at 7, so we would say 1, 1, 1. Then we go 6, which is 1, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, and 0, 0, 0. That is our down sequence. So we start from 7, we go 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0, and that's the end of that. Notice, though, that the up sequence if you invert the bits, becomes the down sequence. So 0, 0, 0 inverted becomes 1, 1, 1. Um, 0, 0, 1 becomes 1, 1, 0, and so on and so forth. So because of this, you might think we should just be able to take an XOR gate and stick it on the output of our counter, and that will allow us to count down. But stop and think about this for a second. Let's go ahead and put this in a state where we would expect it to count down. Let's say we'll put it in state 0, 1, 1, 0. So in state 0, 1, 1, 0, um, with, uh, with a 0 on the input, the output we get is 0, 1, 1, 0. Well, as a down counter, what we would expect it to do is, if we clock it right now, we would expect it to advance to 0, 1, 1, 1, or 7. Um, if we put it in the down counter state, however, we would expect it to stay in this state, and then when we clock it, it would count down from 6 to 5, so 0, 1, 0, 1. But what happens when we change this to a 1? All of a sudden, all these bits get inverted, and we get the output 1, 0, 0, 1. The output changed when we didn't want it to. So doing something like this isn't going to work. So if inverting the output is not something that we can do, what can we do? Well, in order to understand this, let's actually try and take a look at the interaction between two of these uh, T flip-flops here. So when we count up, we start at 0, 0, we go to 0, 1, then 1, 0, then 1, 1. Notice that the second flip-flop only toggles when the first flip-flop goes from a 1 to a 0. And the circuit actually the circuit actually confirms this. Only when the first flip-flop has a 1 on it and the clock signal comes through, does T2, or the second T flip-flop, toggle its state. However, when we look at the down sequence, you can see that the second T flip-flop toggles its state when the first one goes from a 0 to a 1 the exact opposite as the up sequence. So it's this feedback line that we need to toggle, not the output. We need this line to toggle its state depending on whether we want to count up or down. Because remember, if this is in a zero state, but we have it inverted, that will effectively be like it's in a one state and the clock signal will propagate through, toggling the next T flip-flop. So in order to get that desired outcome, what we can do is we can throw that XOR gate right on the feedback line like so. And so if we go ahead and we you know, just play with the circuit for a little bit, just run it through a counting sequence. If we clock it once, this changes from 0, 0 to 0, 1. Clock it again, there is now a uh, signal coming from Q into the AND gate, so the clock signal propagates, and we get 1, 0. Now, if we decide to change this input from a 0 to a 1, 
Well, now the value of the T flip-flop here is toggled. Right now it's in the zero state, but because it's going through this XOR gate, which effectively inverts it, um, we now get a one. So we clock it again. This T flip-flop is going to invert, obviously, but so is this one. And as a result, we've ended up going from one zero to zero one. We count it down without changing the current state. And so simply by daisy chaining that particular circuit across multiple T flip-flops, you can create a counter of any arbitrary length that can count both up and down depending on the state of its up-down input. By the way, you may have noticed that I've labeled my up-down input up bar slash down, um, and that's because it'll only count down when this signal is activated, hence why down doesn't have a bar in it. However, so long as uh, the input is a zero, it will be counting up. So you can think of the up function as being active low, hence the bar over top. Not in too, uh, super important, but a lot of the times when these signals have different functions depending on their state, it's usually useful to indicate what the wire does in each state. So again, this sort of label would indicate that in the zero state, it's going up. In the one state, it's going down. And then for the sake of uh, getting the complete picture here, let's actually tie this into a proper uh, synchronous uh, counter here. Implementing the exact same logic as we did before, all we're basically doing is just putting an inverter between the Q of one flip-flop and the toggle signal of the other. Now, granted, because this is uh, relying on more realistic circuits here, um, each one of these is getting their own separate clock, and they'll only toggle when they receive a one on the T flip-flop, or sorry, the T input, as well as the clock signal, at which point they will toggle. So if we have something in here, if, if, if we have this in uh, countdown mode, and we're in state zero, zero, one. With this being the least significant bit, when we clock this signal, um, obviously T zero is going to toggle, so that's going to turn into a one. In that instance, however, because this was a zero and we were inverting, we're now getting a one. So this one also toggles. Likewise, because this was in a zero, um, you're gonna get a one there, but you're also gonna get a one out of the previous one, um, which that AND gate is of course necessary in order to control the flow and propagation of the clock signals as it should. Um, again, go back to the synchronous tutorial or synchronous counter tutorial if that doesn't make sense. Um, but they both, basically you get a one from both of them, goes through the AND gate. This last flip-flop is allowed to toggle as well because it's in the one state, it ends up in the zero state. So we go from reading this backwards, one zero zero to zero one one, we effectively end up counting down.